Now, one of the bonus credits was to add the students to the top of the list instead of the bottom. Who did that? All right. Let's do it. How'd you do it? Prepend. So we have a pinned child. Where is it? There it is. Prepend child. Just prepend no child. Refresh. That's right. Chally. Oh, do you, did you say you do L Y? No, it's I E. E Y. It is E Y. I wasn't crazy. Cha. Lee. They went to the top. That's pretty nice. Let's look that up. Dom prepend. Parent node prepend. This is an experimental technology. Because this technology specification has not stabilized, check the compatibility table for usage in various browsers. Let's see. Doesn't seem to work in Internet Explorer or Safari, including mobile Safari. No support on Android. I really, really wish we could do it this way. But it doesn't work enough places that I'm going to say, no, we've got to do it the hard way. Who did it the hard way? How'd you do it? Insert before. Insert before. All right. Dom, insert before. Let's go out to MDN here. It inserts the specified node before the reference node as a child of the current node. That's a lot of nodes. So the syntax, parent node, which is the list, right? Insert before. New node is the first argument. Reference node is the second argument. The new node is the one we're inserting. The reference node is the one we're inserting it before. OK, so let's give this a shot. Instead of prepend, this dot student list, that's the parent node, dot insert before. Now our IntelliSense is helping us out here with the arguments. The first one is the new child. So that's list item, right? The second one, the reference child, is the one we want to insert it before. So we need to get the first one that's already in there. How do we do that? How'd you do that? Child nodes index zero. So this dot student list is the parent, right? Child nodes gets us what it sounds like, an array-like thing of all the nodes. If you say zero, that would be the first one. Let's have a look. Go over to the console so we can see any errors. Remind me your name. Oh, yeah, Trenton. Or Trent. Add another one. Seems to work. There is a slightly easier way. Instead of child nodes index zero, we could also say first child. Let's see if I'm lying. Boy Alex, girl Alex. Yeah, seems to work. So let's look again at that UL. If I click here, it becomes dollar sign zero so I can mess with it. So dollar sign zero dot first, we have first child and first element child. What's the difference? What kind of children could it have other than elements? 
text nodes. There could just be some text in there. And that wouldn't be an element child. In this case, if there is text in there, we want it to be before that too. So first child is good. We want it to be the very first thing. But if we didn't, we could use first element child just to make sure it goes before the first li, just in case there was some text in there. Now, that line is pretty long. It's not outrageously long, but it's also a little hard to break down reading it. Takes a minute. So let's write that function that we desperately wish we could we already had and call it we'll call it prepend child. We'll write it ourselves. And it'll just take two arguments, the parent and the child. It doesn't need to know which one it's, it's inserting it before, because prepend, it'll always be the first one. So that'll just be an implementation detail. Don't forget your comma. And it's going to do this. It's going to take that parent, call insert before, insert this new child, and insert it before parent.child. And so up here, we can say this dot student list, or excuse me, this dot prepend child. The first argument, IntelliSense picks this up, is the parent, which is this dot student list. Second argument is the child, which is list item. And personally, I think that makes add student a little easier to read. It's a little easier to tell what's going on. We don't have to figure out what it's inserting before. Now we know it's just prepending it. So a lot of what we do to make our code readable is just take long functions and make a lot of little short functions out of it. And sometimes it's the same length, and it's just a little easier to break down. So I like the look of that. But there's a complication. Pick a Sam, any Sam. There he is on top of the list. But if we look at mega roster students, it's putting them in, in the op opposite order, right? That's no good, boss. So push adds something to the end of an array. Does anybody know how to add something to the beginning of an array? Yeah. Did, do you? OK. OK. Feel free. It's your face. Do what you like. I did this stuff for an embarrassingly long time before I remembered this without looking it up. Yeah. Unshift. You can indeed unshift. So shift kind of moves things to the left. We'll get rid of the first item. Unshift moves things to the right and sticks something on the front. So unshift sticks it on the front of the array. Try this again. Nick. Eric. Goes on the top of the list. And is the first item on the array now. He has the ID of two. He was added second. But he's on front of the front of the array. Cool. We're keeping our data in sync with our presentation. I approve. Let's see, what was my last commit? Git log, reset the form after adding a student. Cool. Hit Q to get out of that. So now, add students 
to the top of the list. I can say beginning, because then that applies to the array as well. Add students to the beginning of the list, instead of the end. Very good.